What if there was a magic pill that could stop your hair loss or even better, get your hair back? Would you have to take this magic pill every day? Are there side effects? You'll find out soon enough because today we're talking all about finasteride. Now, I talk about this medication a lot on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're going to cover all the finer details of what this little pill can do and what it can do for your hair loss. And that includes a little background on how finasteride came to be, how it works, and also what forms it comes in. We'll also cover how effective it is, the potential side effects, post-finasteride syndrome, and how it even can help with your hair transplants. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. So how did we figure out that finasteride helps out with hair loss? Well, finasteride was originally developed to help guys with enlarged prostate glands. Now, this is called benign prostatic hypertrophy. Now, if you're a man, this condition essentially causes you to have more and more trouble emptying your bladder as the prostate gets larger. That's because as the prostate gland gets bigger, it starts squeezing the urethra like a boa constrictor. During the trials of finasteride, a lot of men were able to begin urinating better because this medication actually helps shrink the prostate gland, but there was a side effect. Some of the men started to notice that their hair loss slowed down, and some of them even noticed that their hair density improved. This led to further studies and finasteride was eventually approved for treating hair loss in 1997. But how does finasteride actually work? To put it simply, finasteride blocks an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. This is the enzyme that causes testosterone to be converted to dihydrotestosterone, or DHT. DHT is the main hormone that binds to the androgen receptors in your hair follicles. This activates your hair loss because DHT causes the diameter of your hair to become smaller and smaller. It also causes the hair strands to become clearer and clearer until eventually you're bald. Now remember, finasteride blocks 5-alpha reductase, not DHT. So by blocking 5-alpha reductase, we end up with about a 70% reduction in DHT levels when taking the one milligram tablet. Lower levels of DHT have less effect on your hair follicles. This in turn causes a slowing down of your hair loss and possibly even some hair regrowth. More hair regrowth leads to a fuller head of hair and less of an appearance of balding. But how effective is finasteride? Studies show that it is really effective at slowing down your hair loss. If you compare it to minoxidil, which only really stimulates growth, it's about two times more effective at improving hair regrowth and the thickness of your hair. This makes finasteride the key element in treating your hair loss if you want any hope of slowing down your hair loss and hopefully getting back some of that density. But don't think that finasteride is a magic pill that you just have to take once and it cures your hair loss forever. This is a medication that is meant to put the brakes on your hair loss. So you'll still be losing hair while on finasteride, but at a significantly slower pace compared to if you weren't taking it at all. Think of not taking finasteride as driving down the highway at like 100 miles an hour with no brakes, right? Finasteride is going to help you slow down to about 10 miles an hour and keep you there for as long as you take it. I tell my patients the definition of successful use of finasteride is that if you start the medication and one year later you look exactly the same, well that's the baseline definition of success with finasteride. It really is just meant to put the brakes on your hair loss. Now, a lot of you are going to get some of your hair back with finasteride by the one year mark. And at that point you may think, oh great, I've got my hair back so I can stop taking finasteride now. Wrong. All that luscious hair you got back is because of finasteride. So now you need to continue to take it for however many years you plan on having hair. But what if you don't wanna take a pill for the rest of your life? That's a great question. And there may be a workaround for that, kind of, but we'll get to that at the end. In the meantime, let's talk about the different versions of finasteride. Finasteride comes in three different versions. Now, two of those versions are in pill form. One is a brand name and the other is generic. The brand name finasteride is called Propecia and could potentially be better than the generic form. Why? Because with generic versions, there can be variations in the way the medication is made, which can affect how well it works for some people. In general though, the vast majority of people are gonna get a lot of benefit from the generic version alone. So it's really not mandatory for everyone to be on the brand name Propecia. If you feel like your generic version is not slowing down your hair loss though, then it's a good idea to talk to your doctor about either getting on the brand name or trying another option. The third version available for hair loss is topical finasteride. Now, this form is not FDA approved for hair loss, but it has been found to be effective. The topical version comes in a solution and a gel form, so you have even more options of what works best for you. It comes in two different strengths, like 0.25% and 0.5%, which are both really meant to be applied once a day. Studies have shown that the topical finasteride is just as effective as the pill version, but it also can be argued that it may have less risks of side effects since it's really only being applied to the scalp. So the effect really is only local there in the scalp. But what are the potential side effects of finasteride? Finasteride can have side effects just like any other medication. But for men, it tends to get the most attention because the most common ones can be sexual in nature. For men taking this medication seven days a week, there's about a 2% risk for side effects 
that can include things like decreased sex drive, erectile dysfunction, or even the volume of semen during ejaculation can be less. Other risks can include things like gynecomastia, elevated liver enzymes, depression, or even testicular soreness. I know none of those sound like fun, but the risk again is very low. With that said, if you do experience these issues, it's best to reach out to your prescriber to talk about what to do. Now, in my experience, I see about one patient a year have issues with side effects on finasteride. And when that happens, I usually ask them to stop taking the medications and give it about six to eight weeks for the symptoms to resolve. And then to date, all of those patients that have had side effects, they've all gone away once they stopped the medication for a few weeks. After they've recovered, we tend to have a good conversation on how to restart finasteride. So we decrease the risk of them having those same issues again. But here's the thing about all these potential side effects. A lot of people will go online and do their research about finasteride in online forums, Reddit, you name it. They will look everywhere. When you read about or hear about potential negative side effects of a medication, this can actually increase your risk of experiencing them. This is called the nocebo effect, and studies have found that just hearing about negative side effects can increase the feeling that you too are going to experience them even when they weren't even there beforehand. So keep in mind that one person's experience on this medication does not make it your experience. But what about that rumor that finasteride causes prostate cancer? Well, if you've heard that finasteride can increase your risk of prostate cancer, you should rest easy about that one because the more recent studies have actually shown that to be untrue. Previously published studies in the early 2000s showed a decreased risk in prostate cancers overall but their studies show that there was an increased risk of being diagnosed with high-grade prostate cancer. Now that has since been debunked through other studies showing that the original had some bias present and how they got to those results. Since then, studies have shown that finasteride actually decreases the risk of prostate cancer long-term. The other thing we have to talk about is post-finasteride syndrome, which is a condition that a small amount of men have reported over the years. Post-finasteride syndrome is a term used to describe sexual and mental side effects that a small number of men have reported to persist for at least three months after they stopped taking the medication. Studies have varied on the amount of men that experience post-finasteride syndrome, but reports that I've seen range really from 0.5% to about 1%. But how long does it last? Well, the studies vary here too. So some studies report lasting just a few months to some studies still noting symptoms about four years after stopping the medication. Despite the things that we just talked about, it's a very small population of people that actually experience these side effects. And unfortunately, many companies try to make a lot of money off this fear that these side effects will happen to you. They overinflate the existence of these issues and they try to sell you what they call natural supplements to treat your hair loss. In the end, these products are either totally ineffective or only partially as effective as either finasteride or minoxidil, which then leaves you to waste your money. And more importantly, you lose the time that you could have spent protecting your hair with something that is actually proven to work and in reality has a very small risk of side effects. And because the risk of these side effects are so low, I recommend finasteride to all of my patients planning on having a hair transplant. Why? Because you should think of finasteride as helping to protect the investment you're making in yourself. The reason being is that a hair transplant is going to replace or repair the areas where you're lacking hair. But the hairs that are just behind or around the transplanted areas are still at risk for being lost over time. Finasteride helps to keep these native hairs in place and ultimately, they're going to help your hair transplant results last for a longer period of time. For my younger patients in their mid to late 20s, I recommend that they get on finasteride even before their hair transplant. And this is really to help stabilize their hair loss since they're so early in their hair loss journey. In general, it's really important to use finasteride to help make your hair transplant results last much longer than it would without it. But what if you don't wanna take finasteride every day? Well, in reality, you more than likely don't have to take it every day. And if you wanna learn more about why you don't have to take it every day, you can watch this video right here. I'm Dr. Paul Pierce, and I hope you learned something today. I'll see you in the next video.